All right, potties, you're making a difference because of you and the people that listen to the show on Way FM terrestrially, if you want to call it that. We have sent over 47,000 meals to the people that are struggling in Ukraine after they've been displaced because of the war. That is pretty stinking amazing. And I love the fact that you're getting to partner with us in ministry right now in a very tangible way. You're not only helping feed people, but you're also making sure that they get the gospel as well. So thank you so much so, so much. But sadly, as the war stretches on, the need is still there and becoming greater. Here's the great news, though. It only takes 25 cents to send one meal. So for about the cost of a dinner out for you and your family, you could make sure that a couple hundred meals are sent to Ukrainian refugee families. Can you imagine what a relief that is for moms who have no idea how they're going to feed their kids from day to day? This is truly ministering to the orphans and widows, like the Bible says in James. And we'd love to keep that going and send another 20 25,000 meals to Ukraine in just the next couple weeks. I'm in. I'll never ask you to do something I'm not willing to do myself. So if you want to help out, just text the word WALLY to 91999. And again, thank you so much for even considering this. And let's make a difference. Let's do something huge today. Again, text the word WALLY to 91999. Welcome to the Wally Show Aftercast, all the stuff we did not get to during the course of the show today. Uh, we appreciate you listening to the Aftercast like in its entirety. Uh, so many people listen, and, and, and we're so thankful that you like it. If you ever wanted to help out with this, you know, you could actually help us out by helping us help have it grow. Because they kind of look at this on us and like, hey, is your podcast growing? Is it static? What's the deal with that? And we have to sit in meetings. And What's you could help the me, deal with that? Yeah, if you could help us avoid some longer meetings, that would be great. And it's very easy. <laughs> Yeah, just text TWS or tell your friends to text TWS, that's TWS for The Wally Show, to 91979, and they'll be sent a link that takes them straight to the podcast and the aftercast. So let's say you find yourself in a lull in the conversation, and you're like, hey, have you heard about The Wally Show Mm -hmm. aftercast? It's the best one yet. Text TWS to 91979, and they'll send you a link. We, That's the best way to make us grow. Yeah, we uh, like always talk about different podcasts that we like. You know, like, oh, I like this. And that's the way that podcasts get known predominantly is through word of mouth. So if you like it, share it. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Uh, let's get into some of the stuff we didn't get into today. This was like a news story that uh, I didn't uh, get to. I, I kind of I pull a bunch of stories during the day, and then I try to decide what I feel like sharing on the show that will show up in the regular podcast, uh, and then what I want to say for aftercast. And this was what I was going to do on the show, and then I'm like, no, nah, I don't feel like it today. I'd rather do it in the aftercast. Because uh, it's kind of like the Bible says, be sure your sins will find you out. And uh, Betty Rock has been found out. What? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) What are we talking about? Uh, No, but the same can be true for our economy when it comes to a recession. There are things that you do today, like stimulus checks, excessive pay uh, to get people just to show up for work that will haunt you in the future. And we might be staring down the barrel of a recession as a result of some of these things. You know, a few months ago, if you wanted to work, you could go get a job, no problem. Uh, But now... After going on frenzied hiring sprees, there are certain sectors in the the job market that are seeing less demand, and now they're pulling back on their hiring. Uh, retail being one of the main ones already is pulling back on hiring now. Good grief. I know. It's crazy, Things right? are so unbalanced right now. Like, COVID is still having an effect on everything. I know. It won't go away, mm-hmm. you know? The changing mindset comes as companies uh, pull back based on consumer spending and the prospect of an economic downturn and labor costs going up. So analysts suggest that merchants have also learned uh, to do the same stuff with less workers. Mm Because when people were like, hey, I'm not working ever again. Someone's going to take care of me. The government's going to do it all for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then they had to keep the doors open, and so they found other ways to do it. Like, I was at a McDonald's the other day, and I couldn't get anyone to take my order. Like, I'm in the thing, and there are people there working, but no one would come to the front desk to take my order because they had a couple kiosks. So Mm. they wanted you to do it all through the kiosk, you know? I see. And there's things about the kiosk that are great, and there's things about self-checkout I love, with the exception of Kroger. Only self-checkout in the world that's the worst. Why? Because it constantly reminds you. Like, when you, you beep... Please place item in bag. I'm mm. like it ha- and it pauses everything. If it just said that and kept going, uh, unexpected item in bagging area. No, there's not. There is not. I swear <laughs> to you, there's not. Everything's gonna no, be fine. Not. But there's like so many other places I go where I'm like beep 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 boop, boop, beep boop, beep and I'm out. 
Like, I love self-checkout. I see. Also, Walmart has the one where you can actually, like, if you had a case of water, you can pull the handheld thing and not have to take it out of your cart. Yeah. And that can scan it for you. That's the only place I know that has that. Here's the downside on the Walmart one, though, Mm -hmm. is, if like, if I buy a case of water, like, I buy these individual waters. Right. You know? Oh, yeah, because you're you're bougie. I'm so bougie. Yeah, these 48-cent waters, I'm, like, rolling. (laughs) Um, But if you got all one flavor, like, you can't just scan one. One and then type 30 in mm-hmm. there, you have to scan each one oh, of them. Geez. So every time I get like like 30 of these, I'm like, beep, 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 <laughs> beep. And then you lose count and you're like, wait, did I miss? That? Beep, beep. <laughs> and so, yeah, that one's a pain. But it, the, the gun does work. And so, I, I honestly, though, uh, something that drives me crazy is you look at all of these merchants that are, you know, we're hiring and, you know, struggling and people not choosing to work. And then it really frustrates me, though, when you're at a like an outdoor mall or something and there's the family because that's what they do now. They bring the kids mm. and they have the family sitting there with a sign. Help us. We're hungry. Yeah. And you're like in that mall. 100 feet away from you are eight stores that are hiring. Yeah, there was a family that I saw. It was a woman, and she had two kids out there sitting in lawn chairs, and they were all holding signs. And I I had to keep going because the traffic was pushing against me in the back. So I had to keep going because I couldn't read their sign. But they were standing... In, toward, towards the back of a Zaxby's, yeah, and the Zaxby's just down a little bit said hiring now. I know, so I don't, I don't know what the the problem is. Or the only thing I could think of is maybe it's too costly to put the kids in child care, and she doesn't have anyone there to do it. Maybe. So it's it doesn't. Or work you're not for, hireable because of your status or whatever. Yeah, I get, I I get their extenuating circumstances. I yeah. totally get that. But there is a certain level of irony with people behind you willing to hire you mm-hmm. and you choose not to mm-hmm. you know go fill out an application and, yeah. and do and and go that route right because i mean that's going to teach your kids a lesson about perseverance and hard work uh and how you dig out of something mm-hmm. more so now granted i've never been homeless uh i've struggled absolutely struggled before um but i haven't been homeless so i can't speak a hundred percent to that but i think I think what happens is is when you have the people that are abusing it, it ruin it 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 puts a bad taste in everybody's mouth for the yes. one or two that that okay they don't have any other options and they're mm-hmm. there. I tend to though I I'll I will tell you this when somebody is doing something like there was this lady that was same thing she was at the thing panhandling mm-hmm. but she was doing uh like flowers you know like here's a flower like so she did something she went and got some flowers mm-hmm. and is like selling the flower in essence so mm-hmm. like that i always will stop and go good for you and i'll reward that you know kind of thing mm-hmm. there was a guy playing violin i'm like good for you here you go you know mm-hmm. like he was homeless have my got my sign but he was doing something more than just standing there you know and like right. trying to look sad you know and so i'm like all right well, you're doing something you know yeah so that, like that, that kind of resonates with me a little bit more on that. But anyway, uh, let me see. And then finally, oh man, Putin has lost his ever loving mind. We already knew he's crazy, yeah. uh, except for that one person that listened to me uh, say something on the show and said, "How can you side with Ukraine?" Okay, uh, <laughs> that one person was so mad. Um, so uh, with militaries, uh, with Russia's military action in Ukraine, it's going on five months now. Uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin just doubled down on everything. Uh, he said, basically, uh, brace for the worst. And he said it in an om- ominous, om- uh, ominous, ominous tone yep. uh, that Russia has barely started its action. Like, really, dude? He was speaking uh, at a meeting with... Uh, leaders in the Kremlin, and he said, uh, the West wants to fight us until the last Ukrainian. So now he's dragging in the U.S. He's blaming the U.S. because we've supported Ukraine. We've sent them missiles and things like that. So he said, it's a tragedy for the Ukrainian people, but it looks like it's heading in that direction. So again, he's a narcissist and a psycho that will do what he wants to do, and he's blaming other people. Oh, this is the West's fault. Blaming the victim. Yeah, he's uh, Ukraine's fault. This is the West fault. We could have solved this a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Had you not intervened. And again, he gets away with it because the world just lets him. Mm -hmm. And it will be really interesting to know where that actually stops. Says everybody should know that largely speaking, we have just uh, we haven't even yet started anything in earnest. Oh, my goodness. 
Uh, he said that, oh, we're, we're willing to sit down and talk with people. Uh, to those who refuse to do so, you should know uh, that the longer this lasts, it's more difficult for us to come to terms and make a deal with us. You know, so again, he's like, we're willing to talk, but yeah. no, you're, 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 oh, it's, it's, uh, it's just so sad. And I wonder if he, he, well, probably not, just heard some of the stories about some of the kids that are, you know, hiding care. in bomb shelters doesn't and stuff. Care. It's just so sad. Doesn't care. He doesn't see them as people. You know, mm-hmm. and that's the thing. We dehumanize. Mm-hmm. We do that all the time. And that's where you get slang for people. Um, it happens, especially happens in military uh, altercations and wars and stuff like that. It's easier to call some, it's easier to kill somebody you call a derogatory name. You dehumanize them. They're mm-hmm. not a person anymore. You know, they are a blank, whatever mm-hmm. it is. And we do that even inside of our own relations with people within race it's 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 easier to hate a blank than it is to hate a person Mm -hmm. you know and and so that's part of the thing there but you know one of the things it's been really cool is to see people have been uh texting and emailing me and asking hey how can we help i heard you do something with uh, feeding people in ukraine how can i help it's just wally if you text the word wally to 91999 you can send uh meals like 100 meals for 25 bucks to people that are struggling so that's really cool and i just want to specify too that he said he did say nine nine yes so you know at the beginning we were talking about telling your friends about uh the aftercast and that was seven nine seven nine yeah this ukraine one is nine nine so yeah not no, to be confused not to be confused thank you uh gavin is going to be back next week so right now it's just me and betty rock holding it down uh you got some lease of these what do you got i do uh 80 year old martha stewart she's been single for o- over 30 years she hasn't been that long mm-hmm. she got divorced from her husband andrew stewart can um, i say that it seems like she would be hard to live with <laughs> She, I agree with you, okay. but I'm not sure why I agree. Yeah. there's. It's like, what is it about her that makes it seem that way? And it, I'm not sure. It's because she's so buttoned up and she talks like this and she's very meticulous and you have oh. to do it this way. And it's mm-hmm. got to be the, like, I, like. There's no it, give. Right. It, that's what it seems like. Now, yes. now, I'm not saying that's the reason for their divorce because who knows what happened there. I don't know. But it seems like she would be a hard person. She's very specific and meticulous. And, mm-hmm. and you would have to be wired in a way that you could handle that right well despite being single for over 30 years that doesn't mean she doesn't still hope for love really Uh, in a recent interview she was asked how her dating life was going and this is this is going to get interesting because when you hear this you're going to be like yeah she's definitely got to be a difficult person Mm. Um, she admitted that she's had a few crushes in the past few years but unfortunately They're all married to friends of hers. Oh. So they're the husbands of her friends. You can't say that out loud. She did. And (laughs) it led her to say this, which is something else that she shouldn't say out loud. What she said she wishes about her friends. I always think, oh, gosh, couldn't that person just die? (laughs) The wife. Yeah, not painfully, just die. And then slowly pass away. (laughs) Yeah. I love shocking humor. Like, I love saying the thing that no one else would say to be funny. And I really hope that's kind of tongue in cheek and and, and, in context. I have a feeling that's what that is. There's no way she really feels that way. I don't know. When you get old, you lose your your filter. filter. When you hear it, you're like, oh, that's jarring. (laughs) Can't they just die? We, I knew friend of a friend kind of thing where uh, the wife was terminal and she wasn't going to. Uh, survive Mm -hmm. and she had talked very open about her husband uh, remarrying remarrying and what that would look like and things like that and then in these conversations somehow it came up that he was attracted to like her friend (gasps) yeah early and you're like and they hadn't cheated or anything like that but what a horrible way to send this lady out like it was not received well it wasn't like Oh, well, okay, yeah, she's really great, and she'll take care of you, and I'm happy. I bless this. And and, and it, it did not go that way for oh, them. no. Yeah, exactly. That's awkward. Yeah, it was super awkward. Again, certain things. There are certain things, man. I get it. We all have things that we think, but there are certain things that can't be unsaid, and that's one of them that cannot be unsaid. <laughs> no. And so you you got to be super careful with that Got to be stuff. diligent. Yeah, because, I mean, you're like, hey, man, I'm just being honest. Like, okay, uh, you, can, you can just be honest. But in that honesty, know that there is a price to be paid a lot of times mm-hmm. for that honesty. You don't, mm-hmm. get a, you don't get a free pass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Very true. true. Yeah.
Uh, do you have any birthdays? I don't, but I do have a question. Go for it. I'm ready. I'm all ears. From Rachel. Rachel. And this might be something that um, you can talk about, Wally, because you were talking about it this morning. Her question is, what is the weirdest, most vivid dream of dreams you have had about someone on the show. Now, mm. you were talking earlier about a dream you had about Delta mm. or Southwest. I can't mm. remember who it was. You have PTSD from them losing, losing my your, luggage. Your yeah. luggage, yeah. 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 But I, I know that I know that throughout the years that I've known you, Gavin, yeah. whoever else has been on the show, definitely people that I know that mm. I hang out with a lot mm. tend to come into my dreams. Oh, for sure. But then once, I, and it seems so real, but I mean, instantly when I get up, mm-hmm. I cannot remember it. Oh, really? Yeah. Like there's one, there's a couple that I do remember and I remember I'll tell you and Gavin, I'll be right. like, oh my gosh. Well, but then after a couple hours, I'm like, I can't remember Yours what it is. Yours are was. always so bizarre. Like they are they weird. don't seem connected to anything. Not at all, but they seem so real at the time. Yeah. And they're weird. I've had ones about you where we were at work And something happened, and I'm trying to remember what it was, um, but I... You were getting fired. <laughs> of and, course yeah, I was. I know, right? Probably for something you did. Probably so. You were taking the hit. Uh, <laughs> and, and I remember just, I'm like, I couldn't stop it. I was trying everything I could do to stop it. And I woke up and I was genuinely sad because it felt real. <laughs> it felt that real. Like, I literally was like, how am I going to go in today? I'm going to have to Aww. quit. Like, I'm like, I, I don't even know how I'm going to do this. And then I woke up and I'm like, oh my gosh, that was just a dream. I'm so happy. <laughs> Happy. Or oh, was it? <laughs> oh yeah, I was so happy. I felt so good. I want to know what I was being fired for. Uh, I don't remember. It was something violent. <laughs> <laughs> you were angry, and you, I think you murdered someone. Oh, that's understandable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Uh, want to do some weekend plans? Yeah, weekend plans. Weekend, weekend plans. plans. Weekend plans. Got a weekend plans. plans. All right. Uh, like uh, I wanted a weekend of nothing, kind of, and I don't mm. very, I very rarely want that. But we've been around people every weekend mm. um, for a while and stuff, and I kind of wanted some downtime uh, at the house to work on some projects and stuff. And then I got, oh, my my, my brother's coming into town, or oh, okay, and so a little bit of that mm. stuff. Uh, and so I'm trying to fit in things I've wanted to do and make yeah. in around that. Can. Does does he need to be entertained? No, that's a good thing. Okay, that's a good. Th- but then I don't want to come off as rude. You know, that's right. that's the other thing. Because well, could Marty take care of him? Yeah, and it's her brother. You know, yeah. so but there's times where she'll go. You know, why are you disappearing? That's rude. You know, like mm-hmm. I try not to do it when my mom's in town because I, I should be the one entertaining mm-hmm. her. But my my but Marty's so good with her because she sees her all day. I got to go to work, mm-hmm. and Marty's great with her. Um, and they, and Marty loves her and they do mm-hmm. things and stuff like that. But like, I, I should spearhead that. So I try not to go build something while my mom is here, you know, for right. the most part. Um, but like when other people that like, it's more on her, it's like, I don't see the problem with me going and, and making something in the garage for mm-hmm. an hour or two. But I think she's like, ah, it's kind of rude. And mm-hmm. so I kind of have to balance that. Mm-hmm. But anything that you want to get done that you think you can get done this weekend? Uh, yeah. I, I, you're going to laugh. Oh boy, I'm ready. <laughs> um, I got a, a thing for Father's Day. Was it? it was a gift for Father's Day, and uh, it's ribbon dancing. No, great idea. Not that. <laughs> uh, it 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 it's jewelry related. No, it's not. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna make a, a ring, uh, a thumb ring, <laughs> uh, out of wood, and then do a blue like inlay in it. <laughs> I. For you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I thought it was cool. I thought, oh, I saw one. I thought, oh, that'd be cool. I'd like to learn how to make that. And so I'm gonna. I, I want to try to do that this week. I knew when I said it. I knew I could feel <laughs> I the judgment. I didn't say a thing. You didn't, you didn't have to. I, I didn't see it. say anything. I cannot wait to have a dream about you tonight where uh, you disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for your weekend jewelry making uh, extravaganza. See, I get when you say it like I, that. Well, I, what? It's it, the truth. It sounds like I'm having a jewelry party, like women always have. Like, hey, come on over and buy some jewelry. <laughs>
Have you uh, have you had to do any of those recently? Like no, when your friend gets God. a business and yeah. No. That was kind of in my early twenties, mid twenties, and they've kind of settled down. I think once they get kids, yeah. they just don't have the time. Everyone was side hustling <laughs> right. back then and hey, I'm selling Arbon. Oh, yeah, I don't want to do this. Hey, it's been so long since we've seen each other. Let's hang out. You wanna mm-hmm. come over to the house? Oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. Uh it's gonna be Wednesday night. There's gonna be a couple other people yeah. there. Yeah, uh, you get no, suckered thank into you. it. No, no, thank you. Uh I think the one thing I wanna do though too. Too, it's my wife has been talking about um, her mom's recipe for pizza dough, mm-hmm. and because I decided not to get that pizza oven thing that I thought the the uni pizza oven, uh, but I did get a stone for my grill that will handle like really high heat, and so I'm like, okay, we'll make them on the grill and try that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm really excited to do that. And I kind of want to do like her mom's recipe. It's just like a oh, cool yeah. thing for her. So we yeah. found the recipe, and it's all it's great. It's all stained and just old like it's probably 50 years old you mm-hmm. know and so i'm really that's something i really want to do this mm-hmm. weekend that sounds fun yeah just kind of a good memory for yeah. her you know her and her mom so. right what about you um today after i leave work i have set plans with someone on facebook marketplace to go and pick up a new puzzle <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> so there's that um How also are you 90? i know Hey, you're making a jewelry item. I know. Uh, no, no need to, to. No, totally to, different. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, also, I there's the Kitty Hall event that's happening Are you in downtown go to Franklin. That? We saw a commercial. I probably shouldn't go because they're going to have adoptable cats and yeah. kittens. Yeah. And I know me. And if I see one that's like a little goofy yeah. and just a little bit off, yeah. I'm going to be like sticks out to the side I, a little bit. I gotta have him. And they're going to have him marked off like yeah. they're half. Half off. Well, that's adoption. Cause, that's because they have four toes or Stop. half a tail. It just makes them unique. I know. Walk but sideways. we already have two cats. I we know. do not need a third. Yeah, you don't. <sighs> but they're I know. so cute when they're babies. But you can go. You can go and just look. You can do it. You can do it. We'll see. Take a, take a buddy. Take a wee man. <laughs> take a buddy. That, that knows you're not. Like take, a kitten? Well, no, I'll take no. that buddy. <laughs> take, your, take Nicole, because I don't think Nicole wants Nicole's more cats. Nicole's not in town. Oh. Yeah, she won't. Here's the thing, though. She'll say no more cats. Mm. But then if I accidentally get one, one she'll be like, up. oh, look how cute. Yeah, that's what we told my daughter. Don't get a cat. Don't get a cat. Don't get a cat. And then her roommate got one. Like, okay, you they worked an end around there. <laughs> but you know what? If your roommate ever moves out, then that, that cat goes with her. It's her cat. With your bitchy so, baby. I know, so. uh, then tomorrow, I believe I might be going to a dog's birthday party. Oh, gosh. <laughs> And Sunday next to a meeting at work, that's the next worst thing. No, to it's me. not. It it's cute. No, it's not. No, it's really cute. If it's tongue in cheek and irony, yes. But if it's that person that loves their dog and takes them to stores with them, no. She doesn't do that. You sure? But she does love her dog for uh, sure. Is this the dog sitting one? No. Okay. This is one. a different friend. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'll be fun. If it's done like fun, like it really is just a hangout and, and it's an excuse I mean, to get I'm together. sure that she'll have a party hat oh, and gosh. we'll probably sing her happy birthday. Oh, gosh. <laughs> As, It'll be fun. When, when, when I was younger, uh, when we had Haley, oh, I was 30 when we had Haley and th- it, we were in California, so we didn't know a lot of people and we were starting to make friends and meet people there. And so having a kid helps with that. But there's a downside, too, because now all of a sudden you have to go to every one year old's birthday party. Mm -hmm. Like all the people that my that Marty was meeting in mom's group, mom and me or in whatever it was, Mm -hmm. uh, play gym and stuff. All of them are having one year old birthday parties and you have to go. And then (laughs) as a guy, you're meeting a bunch of other guys, fathers that you have nothing in common with. You don't know them. And they also don't care to get to know you. No. Because because they don't want to be there either. It's like prison. We're all there and don't remember how we got there. You know, (laughs) like to quote Nate Bargatze. Um, And so it it was like you'd be there. And then here was the saddest part of all that. So I got all these dads that are like California dads. And a lot of them were like super rich. and, And I just... I don't know. I just I didn't click with them, and they're and they're they're kind of kind of being mm, piggish, you mm. know, in comments about 
other women and things like that. Like I just I just didn't enjoy that yeah. vibe. Yeah. And so I would find myself at these one year old birthday parties hanging out with the women because <laughs> I could talk about more things. I knew nothing about showing sports. them your jewelry. Yes. Look, I made this yeah. one. I had I knew nothing about sports, so I was out on those conversations with the local teams. And so I but I could go in and I could talk about shows that were on Bravo that I had seen in my uh, life. Right. And so I, I I've always connected with the women that my wife is friends. <laughs> with uh really well oh what does yeah. that say oh so, oh i know what it says yeah it's not good uh <laughs> so anyway all right well you know what let's get on to our weekend here and you guys do the same and uh thanks so much for being a pod hey, hey hey wait wait what? wait don't forget you can tell your friends about the aftercast and the podcast text tws to 91979 there you go thank you <laughs>